frontier stories, it's got mystery, it's got hard-boiled detective stories. And of course, it's all wrapped up in kind of a fantasy setting. You really feel like you're the hero in the Dragon Age world and you're saving people. Dragon Age to me is a wonderful world to play in. I am really excited about the future of Dragon Age. This is an original world, original flora, original wildlife, original architecture. That makes it fun to explore and discover. In the next Dragon Age, you get an opportunity to, to see new things, new places, and interact with people who lived and grew up in these spaces as well. For the game we're working on now, we want to tell a story what happens when you don't have power. What happens when the people in charge aren't willing to address the issues? The things that you can expect in the next installment are going to be stories that focus on the people around you and the friends and family you make. Something that we'll be able to look forward to in Dragon Age is a really close relationship with game characters who really become real for you. We want characters to either be loved or hated. One of the best examples of that is Solus. Half the community wants to kill him, half the people want to marry him, then another part want to do both. They call me the Dread Wolf. What will they call you when this is over? Bioware and EA has been one of the forerunners in using motion magic technology and that makes it way more realistic when you're looking at the characters and the way they walk and move and interact in the world. Players want in that suspension of disbelief that this wonderful collection of digital pixels is actually a living, breathing soul. No, 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 it's okay. That's the good kind of rumble. I actually design bosses. I help with the creature design team as well. So I do all of like, the big threats that you have to go up against. Nobody dies on my watch. For the Wardens! Choice is a big part of what Dragon Age is as a franchise. The decisions you make can affect change in the world. Decision making can mean that a party member lives or a party member dies. And it means owning your outcome and reactivity to the choices that you do make. I just love the possibilities that Dragon Age offers us and I'm excited to explore a lot more of them. To me, that potential is what gets you up in the morning. It's a fantastic opportunity every time. Next up, it's time for something special. I think there's been a serious miscalculation. Well, wait, you're, uh, what, what's his name? Back to the Future. I'm Emmett L. Brown, doctor of physics, not of medicine, and certainly not that quack from Rick and Morty. Yeah, we know who you are, but what are you doing here? I did come back from the future to this precise moment on August 27, 2020, because it's imperative we launch Surgeon Simulator 2 right now. And what exactly do you have to do with Surgeon Simulator? <laughs> During the mid-20th century, some friends of mine from an Shai University invented a state-of-the-art medical training facility, otherwise known as the Surgeon Simulator Training Program. Now, 70 years later, we've digitized the experience. It's unbelievable. You can access the program through your computer and then be medically trained on the comfort of your keyboard. And it's available as of <gasps> Great Scott, this very moment. Tonight, I want a world premiere, a few examples of some of the incredibly successful test subjects who have already completed the course. So you're saying a world premiere will save our future? Only time will tell. And speaking of time, I'm off to another world premiere, Avengers 26, The Return of the Son of Thanos, opening 2077. And with that, I leave the fate of the human race in your hands. Just make sure you play Search and Simulator 2. Now, doctor's orders. Thank <laughs> you.
Put the arm at the axe on his head! No! <laughs> Should we give him a little pat on the head? Where does this path go? Wait, yeah, we got it. He looks good as new. Now grab the good arm and bring it in here. We're dying. He's dying. Oh, oh my God. I think that's not right. My finger slipped. I think it's the right. Oh, it's it came out. It came out. Jesus Christ. What a bad. Oh, oh, it just oh, 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 it's alive. It's alive. He's burning. We saved him. Doc Brown introducing Jacksepticeye playing Surgeon Simulator, only on opening night live. All right, well, if you thought that crossover was kind of crazy, wait until you get a load of this next game announcement that I don't think anyone probably saw coming. Check this out. Tonight is just the start of Gamescom 2020. Over the next three days, there are more streams from IGN and Webedia with in-depth looks at games, a digital cosplay contest, and some special new shows just for Gamescom. Your portal for all things Gamescom this year is Gamescom Now, which you can check out at Gamescom.global. Now, one game you'll hear more about later on IGN's post-show is this one, a return of two classic characters that I love. Check this out. In a world gone strange, one elite force stands against the darkness. But even they could use some help. Here, slip on this little beauty for effect. The return of Sam and Max. Yes. All right. And now it's time to say hello to my wonderful co-host for ONL from IGN. Please say hello to Sydney Goodman. Thank you, Jeff. What's up, everyone? I'm Sydney Goodman, and I am thrilled to be here. Gamescom is always such a fun event, and throughout the show tonight, I'll be telling you about all the different ways that IGN is involved in this year's festivities. But first, I have an award to announce. The winner of Best Nintendo Switch Game is Little Nightmares 2. Huge congratulations. Like I said, IGN is going to be here for all of Gamescom with great shows such as Gamescom Studio, where you can find me and my co-hosts for all day long games content, interviews, dev talks, and more. Plus, we have Gamescom Awesome Indies, the show with and for indie developers. That premieres Saturday, August 29th at 7 p.m. Central European time, so be sure to tune in for more announcements and special guests. And now, let's go back to Jeff for our next big world premiere. 
Awesome. Thank you so much, Sid. Uh, we are so excited to see what's in the uh, the Gamecom studio and also awesome indies. And I'm going to be on the Daily Show tomorrow, so looking forward to that. All right, well, on to our next game. In the next World of Warcraft expansion, players will journey beyond the mortal world of Azeroth to a place where no living soul has set foot before. The Shadowlands, the afterlife of an entire Warcraft universe. The infinite realms of the Shadowlands are watched over by different factions, known as Covenants, each holding dominion over a different aspect of the afterlife. And depending on how someone lived their mortal life, they may end up as part of one of these Covenants when they cross over into the Shadowlands. Today, we're excited to give you a closer look at the noble and pure Kyrian Covenant from the realm of Bastion, who are charged with carrying the souls of the dead into the beyond. So sit back and get ready for the world premiere of Bastion, the first in Blizzard Entertainment's new four-part series of animated shorts called Afterlives. Enjoy. was sealed within the Maw long ago. You're wrong. He destroyed my home, murdered my people and my king. He must be punished. You are an aspirant now. You must accept your new purpose and purge yourself of this desire for vengeance. What I desire is justice. Devos, why are you training this soul? It is beneath your station as a paragon. He cannot let go. He continues to demand retribution for his death. And this concerns you? Many souls take eons to ascend. Yes, but this one seems broken, Thenios. Unlike any soul I have seen, I have begun to wonder whether he was deemed worthy of Bastion. By mistake. Be careful, Devos. I would not let the Archon hear such a thought. In time, he will forget. Trust our ways. Trust the path. Devos. How long must we train? Until you are ready to ascend. And what is keeping me from ascension? Nothing but the memory of your mortal life. How can I forget when I can still feel his blade? Your soul is wounded? Who did this to you? He was my student. He betrayed us all. Show me. <sighs> the runes on his blade were un- 
unmistakable. This dark agent runs free on a mortal world with the power of the Maw itself in hand. Our realm is imperiled. Impossible. The Maw is inescapable. You must return to the path. If he had purged his life, we never would have known of this calamity. The path is flawed. Enough! The order of the Shadowlands depends on the execution of our eternal charge. You will abandon this course. As you command, my Archon. of your ascension has come. I thought I was not ready. Do you wish to see him punished? I do. Then prepare yourself. The moment he falls... We will claim him. I see. Only darkness. you guys enjoyed that exclusive look at Bastion. Now, we know many of you can't wait to experience Shadowlands, and our friends at Blizzard want you to know the wait is almost over. October 27th, it is official. We have so much more Opening Night Live still to go for you. Ratchet and Clank, PlayStation 5, uh, much more. Stay tuned. All right, but now it's time for the announcement of a new universe that is coming to gaming for the first time with a project from a Canadian studio. Check this out. They have returned. They corrupted. Divided. Conquered. Until finally, the gates of the Celestial Realm 
were thrown open. Our last remaining hope, the Stormcast Eternals. Vengeance made manifest. Now, you guys may remember back in June, I had some masked fun with my buddy Crash Bandicoot announcing Crash 4 It's About Time. With the game coming in October, Crash, of course, had to come back for opening night live. So let's bring him out, everybody. Crash Bandicoot. What? He's where? apparently didn't get the memo about Gamescom. But to tell us more about what we just saw, I'm joined by Lou Studdert from Toys for Bob. Uh, Lou, w what did we see there with uh, Crash and the Gamescom bot? <laughs> uh, apparently you saw him wandering around Cologne, but uh, what he was hinting at was kind of our reveal of what we call flashback tapes, which are a brand new style of level that we are announcing here today. Okay, so uh, how do these flashback levels kind of play into the overall Crash 4 narrative? Yeah, so the way that the, the flashback tape levels work is that they are kind of a peak back in time to the 90s when Neocortex was actually testing on Crash and Coco before the events of Crash Bandicoot 1. And they're kind of these devious puzzle rooms that we've made, uh, and they're really hard and they're really awesome and they're super creative and we can't wait to uh, get people's hands on them yeah no I, I i got to play a demo of this a few weeks ago and that was a challenge so i can't imagine um how nefarious <laughs> these are um how are they going to be sort of integrated into the game are they are they optional like offshoot stuff or how do you how do you get to them Sure. So players actually have to collect the flashback tapes in the levels themselves. Uh, they're an object that they can pick up, and to actually pick them up, they have to reach them in the level without dying. It's uh, kind of our homage to the death routes from the original trilogy. So players have to reach these objects in the level, pick them up, and then once they get them, they'll get access to these unique levels. So beyond the pure challenge, uh, what other fun? So how, how are these fun for players to kind of experience? What do they get to do in them? Sure. So one of the things that we did was we actually used these as, like I said, puzzle rooms, really kind of fun, nefarious, devious ways for Crash to really express that pure platforming kind of uh, aspect of gameplay that we know and love about the franchise. But then narratively for us, it was really cool to layer in kind of a unique perspective to the franchise. This is the moment when Cortex is really excited about the prospect of Crash being on his team, because Crash was originally created by Cortex, and so this is a weird point in time that's never really been explored in the games before. Awesome. All right. Well, Crash 4, it's about time. Looks phenomenal, Lou. Uh, we cannot wait to check it out uh, in October. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Awesome. All right. Well, we will be right back after this for more Gamescom Opening Night Live. I have become terror. You can't the unseen predator. You can't find it from. A rupture that obliterates without warning. Yeah, Alone, the hordes of Enoch will fall before me. But together, 
This entire planet will fear us. The anomaly alters us each in our own ways, yet we are drawn down the same road into the dark heart of creation. Cause I feel the way you feel. Find the source, whatever it holds, whatever it takes. Welcome to Necromunda. I can see you're new here. Let me get you up to speed. The Underhive's named well. A sprawl of humanity suffering away like ants. Deep underground where we ain't causing trouble but a rich boys and girls, no matter how loud we are. And do we ever make some noise? Every Orlock says they could shoot the tail off a lashwork and they'd splash your head from 20 paces for saying they couldn't. I don't want to say immortal, but when their armour, blood, skin and will are of iron, it's a potent combo. Why would someone like you want to know about an all-female gang of psychopaths, drug dealers, killers, cloners and... Oh, makes sense. And Escher will cut you up just for the fun of it. Goliaths are big. That's it. Anything smaller than them doesn't deserve to live. And they're just as happy filling you with lead as they are smashing you to pieces with a power mold. Now, mixing that whole pot together in a place like this, you can imagine what happens. Chaos. Gang warfare. For wealth. For power. Hell, sometimes just for fun. So, think you're ready? Necromunda Under High Wars comes to PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC on September 8th. O futuro dos jogos, além de realidades virtuais extremamente fidedignas e realistas, eu acho que também se encontra em formas mais expressivas e absurdas, quebrando cada vez mais esses paradigmas de formato de videogame que a gente tem e sendo usado mais do que nunca como uma ferramenta de expressão artística. I envision the future gaming to be quite bright and quite online. The next generation of console will clearly allow AAA and indie developers to build more creative-driven games that I hope will cover more diverse subjects. I want to play all kinds of stories about people and places, both real and imagined. I want comedy games, I want autobiographical games. I really want to see what people can do with the media. Para o futuro dos games, eu vejo uma evolução obviamente gráfica, mas eu vejo ainda mais evolução na inteligência artificial e na maneira com a qual a gente a gente interage com os games, tudo em busca de experiências mais imersivas. You know, one of the things I love about Opening Night is that we can show you the biggest games in the industry and also smaller titles that should be on your radar. 
So pay attention to this next game. It comes from a team of two in Sweden, Tuxedo Labs. Over the past three years, developer Dennis Gustafsson has built his own game engine to realize his vision for a fully destructible game world. What he's building has absolutely blown me away, so I asked Dennis to prepare a special trailer just for tonight. I hope you're equally inspired by the ideas in this next game. Definitely one to watch. Teardown. Last year at Opening Night Live, we announced Little Nightmares 2 to the world. Well, the team at Tarsier Studios hasn't shown anything since, but that changes right now. Here is a first look at the gameplay of Little Nightmares 2, which is coming next February, with more to come throughout the week at Gamescom, including a live demo on Gamescom Studio tomorrow. Thank you. Jerry the King Lawler, and I'm reuniting with my old buddy Mauro Ranallo to bring you all the over-the-top action in WWE 2K Battleground. Mamma mia! <laughs> this is great! This arcade-style video game is over-the-top outrageous, with over 70 WWE superstars and legends brawling it out like never before! Oh no! Hold on to your 2K, Mauro! L-I-T! You know, I'm a little more old school. 
than Morrow. So I can't wait to see these WWE legends teach these kids a thing or two. And you know what? Here's a closer look at the insane action. It's a great evening for WWE action. Oh, wow. Take that, Morrow. Man, it's so good to see the Bella Twins at their best. And now, let's keep this party rolling with another matchup. Oh, look out, Morrow. The Undertaker has risen, and Finn Balor is about to be taken for his last ride. Mamma mia, what a move. Finish him. Oh, no. He just hit the snooze button. How do you lose like that? What's the matter with you, Legends? This is just an example of the pandemonium that you're going to experience when you head to the battlegrounds. That's a big toy hammer. Oh, I can't believe my eyes. Seth Rollins delivers the stop. What a night. What a night. This is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Pre-order WWE 2K Battlegrounds today and Brawl Without Limits. Mamma Mia! Oh, sorry, Moro, I know that's your line. Hello again. I have even more awards to announce, so let's get right down to it. The winner of the Best Action Adventure Game is Watch Dogs Legion. The city needs a resistance. And it starts with you. What do you think? The winner of the best action game is Star Wars Squadrons. Think you can escape? This is gonna be close. The winner of the best multiplayer game is Operation Tango. Operation Tango. It takes two to save the world. The winner of Best Indie Game is Curious Expedition 2. Did not believe what I had witnessed. It was time for the world to learn my name. Congratulations to all the winners. As I mentioned, IGN will be here for all of Gamescom with great shows and new ways for you to get all your gaming news. Check it out. Gamescom 2020 is the heart of gaming, and you can keep to the beat right here on IGN. We've turned the single biggest show in gaming into five. Gamescom Now is your virtual show floor with up to the second live coverage. Gamescom Daily Show, Gamescom's first ever late night talk show. Our Gamescom Awesome Indie Show, the freshest deep cuts in indie gaming. And finally, the Gamescom Best of Show, including the Gamescom Award. Gamescom 2020 is available on IGN and wherever you stream Gamescom Now. And now it is time to talk about that best action game winner, Star Wars Squadrons. This is a new immersive space combat game from Motive Studios that delivers the ultimate Star Wars pilot fantasy. We've missed those. In Squadrons, you'll suit up and fly for both the New Republic and the Galactic Empire across intense 5v5 multiplayer battles, as well as an all-new, authentic, single-player story set after the events of Star Wars Episode VI, Return of the Jedi. Today, we'll get a glimpse of what Squadron's story has to offer by taking a brief look at one of the single-player missions featuring some light narration by the Motive team. Let's check it out. We all choose our path. Light or dark. Freedom or destruction. The Empire chose to destroy Alderaan in order to spread fear and douse the fires of rebellion. But the heroic pilots of the Rebel Alliance have chosen to keep fighting, to show the Empire that we are not afraid. It was their bravery that ended Palpatine's reign and brought about our new Republic. However, the Empire lives on, shattered though it may be. As I speak, Imperial forces are edging toward the Bormia sector, hoping to end our new Republic before we find our footing. As their empire collapses, they try to tighten their grip. But the galaxy is changing, and you can be a part of it. With the help of brave and daring pilots, this war can end. Make a choice. Fly with the New Republic. 
change our galaxy for the better. Hi, I'm Suzanne Hanka, narrative producer on Star Wars Squadrons. Our single-player story is one of daring pilots and deep-seated rivalries. Take Titan Squadron, hunt down this Starhawk, and eliminate it. Gladly, Admiral Sloan. Over the course of the story, you'll fly as two pilots on opposite sides of the war. And, like all modes in Star Wars Squadrons, you'll have the option to experience every mission fully immersed in VR. Wedge Antilles, Rogue Squadron. I hear you're the reason I was able to finally get a comm through. Today, we're giving you a glimpse of an early Imperial mission behind enemy lines. One of our spies, Agent Thorne, has discovered vital intelligence on Project Starhawk. Your mission is to extract her from an orbital outpost above Hosni and Prime. Behind enemy lines, you'll have to eliminate perimeter defenses. The outpost is defenseless. When you've secured the area, you will escort the Gladius to the outpost, and our extraction team will acquire Agent Thorne. Once Thorne is secure, reach your Gozanti cruisers and return to the Overseer. Cover our escape and escort us to the jump point. We have Republic Corvettes inbound. Move, Titan! Gladius, change course and keep Agent Thorne safe. Titan Three, take out those fighters. Understood. I'll handle it. You have my thanks, Titan Squadron. No time to celebrate. Move on. Each mission will immerse you into the escalating conflict between the New Republic and a shattered empire. Debrief with your squad mates between missions. You're our new wingmate. Customize and master all eight starfighters and join the galaxy's finest. I need you focused and ready to go. From bombing runs at the Nadiri dockyards to setting a trap in the Xavian Abyss. The story of these rival squadrons will push the war to the brink and define the galaxy for years to come. I look forward to seeing you in combat October 2nd. That is not all EA has to share from a galaxy far, far away today. At Star Wars Galaxy Edge, you can enter the world of Batu, where you can visit Oga's Cantina or jump into the Millennium Falcon on a run to Smuggler's Cove. It was this incredible adventure at Disneyland Resort and Walt Disney World Resort that inspired The Sims' latest game pack. Check this out. Even more Star Wars to come later in the show. Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker Saga is up. And as we move into our second hour, we've got Fall Guys Season 2 still to come. The reveal of that, which I can't wait for you guys to see. And of course, 
a gameplay demo of Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart for PlayStation 5. But right now, you might remember this next game from Annapurna Interactive from last year's Microsoft E3 event. And today, I'm excited to share a new announcement from the team. This interactive thriller about a man stuck in a time loop is one of this year's most intriguing indie titles, and now they've added an absolutely all-star cast to the game. Here's a whole new look at 12 Minutes. All right, close your eyes. I want you to think of a flower. Look at its contours, its curves. Now I want you to imagine it changing. Hey, hey. Moving backward, no, returning to its bud. Think of that bud, unopened. Look at it as a whole, then silently repeat these phrases. May you be free from suffering. May you be free from fear. May you know peace and joy. That's going to be a really special indie game. So glad to announce that here on the show. Uh, now, last year at the Game Awards, we announced Godfall, a new looter shooter coming to PlayStation 5 and PC from Counterplay. Tonight, we've got a quick sneak peek of one of the new Valor plates with more footage coming as part of Gamescom 2020. Check this out. We have much more ONL to come. Exclusive looks at Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker Saga, Fall Guys Season 2. <laughs> Wait until you see what the Mediatonic guys are up to, and so much more. But first, I'm sure you saw that earlier this week, Heart of Deimos, Warframe's newest uh, expansion, was released on PC, Xbox, and PS4. And today, it's also on Switch, all platforms. Here's a look at the Heart of Deimos. Expand, explore, tear the veil of thunder, subvert new territory to our sovereign will. But that was what it wanted too. It raged unchecked through metal, bone, flesh. Life. We are infested with it. What? Visitors? Now, the gateway is failing. The jaws close. The final heartbeat approaches. Try turning it off and on again. But before we fall, we shall scream. There is one who will hear the heart of Deimos. So many people have been discovering or rediscovering video games during lockdown, whether it be older people or bored teenagers or middle-aged parents who suddenly find they have to do something together with their kids. And I think I've given out more advice about video games in 2020 than any other time ever. And as a result, it's more important than ever that we keep making different interesting things for folk to play. 
A pandemia pela qual a gente está passando tem sido um período difícil a todos. Então, nesse momento, eu acho que a gente precisa lembrar de mostrar mais empatia, demonstrar mais amor, mais carinho e saber que a gente vai sair dessa juntos, vai ser difícil, mas isso tudo vai passar. I hope everybody gets healthy and safely through this corona virus time. Uh, care about other people and wear your masks. Jogos são, na minha opinião pessoal, a forma de arte mais incrível de se expressar. Eles englobam tudo: música, arte, escrita, e você tem a chance de controlar e vivenciar essas experiências você mesmo. É mágico, é maravilhoso. Jogos são por amor. guys we're back officially into hour two we've got an hour more of great stuff to show you destiny 2 beyond light stasis you're going to see a brand new look at that fall guys season two and ratchet and clank for playstation 5 and so much more across the next hour opening night live continues and it just is the start of gamescom 2020 But right now, on September 25th, Mafia Definitive Edition launches a comprehensive, built-from-the-ground-up remake of the original Mafia. Tonight, we've got the exclusive debut of the next trailer, called A Life of Reward Too Big to Ignore, which deals with Tommy's induction into the Salieri crime family. Check this out. All these guys in this room... They're here because they have the only thing that matters to me. The only thing that should matter to any of us. You know what that is, Tommy? They're loyal. That's right. One day you're busting your back, doing an honest day's work in a city that's been trying to scrape you off its heels since the day you stepped off the boat. And then next you're stuffing your pockets full of Salieri's dirty money. Ha <laughs> ha! Go get him, Tommy! Teach these boys a lesson. Break every bone in their bodies. You want me to become one of those Wall Street boys? Don't sass me, Tommy. I'm trying to teach you the ropes, so you don't get strangled by them. Now you stay straight with me, you're gonna be living the high life, Tom. You abuse my trust. Don Celieri, you won't ever need to worry about me. Okay then. Welcome to the family.
Next, we're going to introduce you to a turn-based multiplayer strategy FPS from a team in Montreal, Canada. Lemnis Gate is coming in early 2021 and has a unique mechanic built around a 25-second time loop. Check this out. Next spring, get ready to experience memorable moments and non-stop action from all nine Star Wars films in Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. The entire series has been reimagined with new fun-filled Lego humor, and now we've got your first look at the gameplay trailer. I want to learn the ways of the Force and become a Jedi like my father. The Force is unusually strong with him. That much is clear. Twisted by the dark side, young Skywalker has become. Happily, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only help. <laughs> That boy is our last hope. No, there is another. I'm from the Resistance. Your sister Leia sent me. We need your help. Him, the Falcon. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. So be it, Jedi. Man, Lego Star Wars looks so fun coming to next gen as well. All right, we'll be right back with more world premieres from huge new games like Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, Medal of Honor, Above and Beyond, and Destiny 2. But before that, here's a look at a game that is launching tonight on Nintendo Switch and Steam. It's called Struggling from Frontier, a fun physics based platformer where up to two players control Troy, our fleshy hero. Check this out, and remember, you can play this tonight.
We're near Little Hope. Did you hear that? What more proof is needed that the devil walks among us in Little Hope? say the game that i've given the most hours to that i love going back to is assassin's creed odyssey not to say since origins came out this new reboot of assassin's creed uh so to speak that was my first time getting into it and i have put almost 400 hours into assassin's creed odyssey at the moment i enjoy to play fall guys uh, with my friends it's very funny easy to learn but hard to master i have a few games that i binge play um games that i return to every year Uh, Halo, the entire Master Chief collection, is really a big one for me where that's concerned. But I also still just casually binge Animal Crossing and have been doing that basically all year. I haven't put down Animal Crossing since I downloaded it. I find the daily repetitive rhythm so soothing and predictable. Uh, although much like my house, my island is still a complete tip. Up next we have the award for best Microsoft Xbox game. And the winner is Tell Me Why. Congratulations to Don't Not Entertainment. Well, after a big day of Gamescom events and announcements, you'll be happy to know that IGN is going to help you digest all that info with the Gamescom Daily Show, where you can get all the daily highlights and a late night show experience from gamers for gamers. Back to you, Jeff. Thank you very much, Sid. Uh, and by the way, congratulations to Don't Nod for uh, Tell Me Why, a really important game that is out now that you can play um, on Xbox, Xbox and Game Pass. And uh, as we know, there's a lot going on in the world, and that goes beyond the pandemic. Uh, between social conflicts we're seeing in the news and acts of nature, we can see how vulnerable we as people can sometimes be. And now I think it's as important time as ever to remember to come together and support one another. We are a global gaming community. There are millions of people watching tonight, and I know we're all here because we love games, and we know that games are good in the world and can bring us together, and I think we've all felt that in 2020. So I think that's really important to remember amongst all the games and trailers. All right, well, one, ga uh, one, one way as a community we can come together to do some good is the Gamescom Forest. Gamescom has launched a reforestation project by planting a Gamescom Forest together with the community. Gamers worldwide can go to gamescom.global and donate to plant more trees. So let's plant a forest together. All right, well, now we're going to move on to another game, and this one was announced back in May. Chorus is a dark space combat shooter where players take control of Nara on a quest to destroy the dark cult that created her, featuring rich, ray-traced 4K 60 FPS environments on next-gen hardware. Here is the first look at gameplay from Chorus.
many crowns have you won? If one game has defined the summer of 2020, it absolutely is Fall Guys from Mediatonic in London and Devolver. This game is setting records and putting a much-needed smile on everyone's face. Fall Guys, I think, represents our industry at its absolute best. Well, soon the Fall Guys experience will evolve with Season 2. There's a lot of new stuff coming, and tonight... Mediatonic is about to give you an exclusive sneak peek at what's next. Get ready. I think the internet is about to freak out. Here it is, Fall Guys Season 2. Hey, I'm Joe. I'm the lead game designer on Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout. And I just want to reach out and say thank you to everyone who's been playing and enjoying the game so far. As a team, we've been looking at all the fan arts, the memes, and the montages that people have been posting online, and the response to the game has really blown us away. Today, we just wanted to give everyone their first sneak peek at the rounds and the costumes that they can be enjoying as part of Fall Guys Season 2. You'll be dressing your full guy as a medieval hero and competing across brand new rounds inspired by epic quests from the Middle Ages. Traverse giant drawbridges, dodge swinging axes, and scale movable seed ramps in the quest for ultimate game show glory. enjoyed the sneak peek of Fall Guys Season 2. We're still adding the finishing touches to development, but if you want to stay up to date, then at Fall Guys Game on Twitter is where you want to be. See you on the start line. My father has Colorado in the palm of his hand, and he's afraid to close his fist. I am not. Liberty's got more brains and cunning than both her brothers put together. She's the only one who could actually run Colorado. She's already tried once. Vic's a depraved child, and Val's a brain without a spine. The years my father wasted grooming them for glory when I was right there. to Arizona, Rangers, and I'll pretend none of this happened. Stay, and you die alone. I really haven't found any new appreciation for gaming at this time, because my appreciation for gaming before couldn't be higher. Com certeza, jogos multiplayer preenchem completamente a conexão social que eu preciso ter com outras pessoas nesses tempos de isolamento e é o mais próximo que a gente pode ter de experiências reais com pessoas que estão longe da gente. You get to travel all over the world in games, which is something I've always taken for granted. And the moment I'm playing Ghost of Tsushima and, you know, I kind of prefer it to the real Japan just because I've heard that in real life they don't let you run around with tarnas. I appreciate games a lot more than films, music or whatever and it's just fine uh, for me to to have the time to play with friends or even with my family uh, to have a lot of fun. I've been mostly at home with small children and gaming is the only thing that I get to do for myself anymore. I find it's not only an escape, it's also a way to challenge my brain. 
gaming is becoming clearly more important for a lot of people. You know, play is a natural instinct, and from Animal Crossing to The Last of Us Part 2 or Ori, yes, yes, it's definitely an incredible time now to be a gamer, yes. Hey everyone, I'm Vince Sampella, head of Respawn Entertainment. When we set out to create Medal of Honor above and beyond, we knew we wanted to bring the series back to its roots. The Medal of Honor franchise is known for its powerful and exciting single-player stories that put the player in the boots of a soldier who was there. It's a series that is grounded in history, which tells emotionally authentic stories. Peter Hirschman, who directed the original Medal of Honor in 1999, is back at the helm of this project. You'll hear more from him in just a bit. Peter and I actually worked together on Medal of Honor Allied Assault in 2002, and I'm really happy he's joined us at Respawn to craft a completely new experience in VR. The team is creating a riveting and emotional journey through World War II like you've never seen or played. It weaves in the personal stories of the veterans and survivors of the war through powerful interviews that help set the stage for what players will experience. It's more than just a game. And we could not be more excited to show the world the next look at Medal of Honor Above and Beyond and the game's action-packed story. Let's take a look. Some of you will see combat. I know you're scared. Let me be clear with all of you. I'm scared too. Welcome to France, gentlemen. I lead the local resistance cell. Something big is happening inside Gestapo headquarters, and we don't know what it is. We're gonna have to improvise here. Members of the Resistance are perhaps the bravest people fighting in this war. But you really should stop. There is no future in it. Sorry to interrupt. Lieutenant? Be a wild ride, but we'll get you there. Jet fighters, brace yourselves! Like I said... as people I'm willing to sacrifice myself for. Somehow this motley crew has been tasked with saving civilization. God help us all. Thank you so much, Vince. That looks incredible. And now we're here with Respawn Entertainment's Peter Hirschman, game director on Medal of Honor Above and Beyond, to talk more about their new VR experience. Uh, Peter, I got to say, the trailer really grabbed me. Such an incredible story that you're telling, too. Uh, tell us a bit about this single player experience. What can we expect? Well, Jeff, thank you for having us on the show. The, I'm representing a whole team back at Respawn that's been working really hard on this, and it's uh, so exciting to premiere the trailer uh, with you. Uh, Metal uh, going back to its roots, uh, was always about putting uh, the player in the boots of a soldier fighting in World War II. Um, and with VR, we're able to do that in almost a literal way. Uh, it's, it's definitely the most immersive experience, most immersive combat experience uh, I've ever been able to work on. Um, and the story follows uh, you as a player being recruited into the Office of Strategic Services, um, commonly known as the OSS. Uh, and their mission was sabotage, espionage, search and rescue, everything uh, in between. Uh, you name it, they did it. Um, and they're known by a different set of initials uh, now, the, the CIA. Um, but during World War II, 
Uh, they sent operatives all, all over Europe, uh, deep behind enemy lines. Uh, and that allows us to tell a story where you get to go to these places and locations and participate in events that really helped shape the outcome of the war. One of the things I love about the trailer is you can tell there's a lot of interactivity in the environment, emergent gameplay. You, you got the piano and other things in there. Tell us a bit about um, how you're using that to, to tell the story. It seems like it's all kind of through a first-person perspective, but there are some story sequences. How do you tell the story? Oh, well, we shot, we shot over 120 pages of um, you know, which is more than some feature films. Uh, we had a, a huge international cast of phenomenal actors, uh, and, and it was fantastic. And the story follows a, a, a classic three, three act structure. Um, act one is working with the, the French resistance, getting ready for the invasion. Uh, act two is D-Day itself and the fight uh, to get to Berlin. Uh, and then the third act is dealing with the Nazi secret weapon program, which you know, involved things like the 262 uh, jet and the V2 rocket and, and things that could have really turned the tide of the war if, if we hadn't stopped them. Um, so you get to go on this, this journey, you know, this story. Um, and the story is shot all from your perspective because it's VR, your head is the camera. We don't have cutscenes, we don't have edits. Everything, uh, everything revolves around your perspective. So you experience this story completely in first person as, as if you are there. Um, so it creates a much more intimate and, and uh, uh, emotional connection with the characters and the things going on around you. Uh, it, it was a, an incredible way to, to shoot. Um, one of our animators stood in for the, the player throughout, uh, throughout the three weeks that we were on stage. Um, and all the actors are, are always reacting and talking to you directly. And in VR, it's such a, a powerful thing. It's all about building that emotional connection. And it just makes the experience all the more uh, authentic. Well, you and Vince, I know this this series is really close to your heart. And uh, I, 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 I'm like, wow, there's, just, there's so much there to experience. It looks really rich and detailed, obviously authentic as well. Um, you know, paying tribute um, to everyone that uh, was involved in, in the war. I, I wanted to ask you also about multiplayer, which is something that Respawn is really known for. And you've had a great single player experience, but I hear you might also be doing MP too. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, the thing about VR is that, uh, you know, I spent so much, I mean, we don't each other a long time. I, you know, I, you know, you spent so much of your career trying to map natural human movements to a, to a controller and just figuring out things like making them feel good. And, and one of the hardest ones is, is leaning. And in VR, you know how you duck, you, you just duck. And, and how you lean in VR, you, you just lean. And so the ability to lean around a corner, just kind of peek around the corner and see where the bad guy is, is just it, it heightens the tension so much. It makes it it makes it feel all the more real. And when you put that into a multiplayer experience, it, it just raises it to a whole nother level. So we are shipping, in addition to the campaign, we are shipping a, a full suite of VR modes, uh, including a few that you can only do in, in VR. And we're really excited about uh, people playing those, uh, um, you know, uh, after it comes out. Wow. Well, definitely a full-blown VR experience. I got to say, I'm really excited to uh, put the headset on and try this. And it's coming out uh, later this year, right? Coming out holiday. So, uh, yeah, fasten your seatbelts. Uh, we're, we're, we are so excited to, to bring it to players. We've been working on it a long time. Like, like you mentioned, it's a passion project for, for Vince and I and everyone at Respawn. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's a wonderful full circle uh, experience for a lot of us that got our started our careers working on those original set going back first one and 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 uh, Allied Assault and now to be able to bring Above and Beyond uh, to a whole new generation is uh, is one of the most exciting things we've been involved with. Awesome, thank you so much, Peter. Opening night live. We'll be right back, and in the meantime, here's a look at a new game that is launching tonight. The world was broken. Fractured by the magic the Vow Keepers said they would protect us from. Spellstorms still rage across the ruins of the Hollow Lands. This is proof, they said. It isn't safe. It can't be controlled. Magic cannot be used. Now 
I fight to break free. So many great games in Xbox Game Pass, and many of tonight's games are in it as well. Uh, every year at Gamescom, we like to highlight some incredible games made in Germany. And tonight, we have a special announcement about one of the most legendary German games of all time, created by Factor 5. Enjoy. Factor 5 was so far ahead of the curve, and each of their games pushed game technology as far as possible. I'd say they're one of the greatest indie developers of all time. Sound is beautiful, the graphics are beautiful, the gameplay is beautiful, and I'm really happy to see the collection of Talikan. I'm really happy to see the collection of Talikan. This was the first game that allowed me to completely fulfill my musical vision. It defined my career and the fans have been there ever since. To this day, it's one of my proudest works.
In June, Bungie revealed a new era of Destiny 2 that starts on November 10th with Beyond Light. For the first time ever, Guardians will add a new elemental power to their arsenal, the Dark Power of Stasis. With Stasis, players will take on the powers of darkness to control and dominate the battle. Here's an all-new look at Stasis from Destiny 2 Beyond Light. is here. As you step away from the light, we need only look inward. Focus your power. Let it grow. Our fight is far from over. PlayStation game. So, without further ado, the winner is Cyberpunk 2077. Congratulations. Of course, there are even more awards than the ones I announced tonight. So check out the Gamescom Awards user voting, where you can vote for your favorite streamer, Gamescom's most wanted, and best of Gamescom. The winners will be revealed at Gamescom Best of Show, along with cool cosplayers, esports, and more. So tune in on Sunday, August 30th at 8 p.m. Central European time to see the grand finale of this year's Gamescom where we give gamers the stage. That's it for me tonight, but before I turn it back to Jeff, I just want to say that I hope everyone out there is staying safe and healthy. We're all in this together, so take care. Back to you, Jeff. Thank you very much, uh, Sydney. It's great to have you on the show again this year. Uh, all right. Well, a lot of people have been wondering, what will the next generation of gaming feel like? How will it be different? What is that generational difference? Well, back in June, we saw the announcement of Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart from Insomniac Games, a title which uses the power of PlayStation 5, the SSD hard drive, and the DualSense controller to create an experience that Insomniac says is only possible on brand new hardware. Well, now it's time for you to decide if you see the difference. Here's an extended, uninterrupted demo of live PlayStation 5 gameplay of Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. Enjoy.
Bringing out the big guns. Hitting Nefarious' device seems to have destabilized reality. The bridge is shot! There has to be another way across! Hmm. The rifts appeared to react to your device. Try pointing it at one of them. <laughs> that was rather exciting. Games before train! side of that building. Let's get moving before he does anything else to break reality. Did Dr. Nefarious really resurface after all these? Just to try and take over the universe again? Yeah, I kind of wish he was doing a worse job. He must have more planned than he is telling us. That's what I'm afraid of. See what's new.
of them. We have to get the Dimensionator away from Nefarious. Dimensions are weakening considerably. Well, it is certainly not good. Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, and now I am joined by Marcus Smith and Mike Daly from Insomniac Games. Uh, guys, it was so great to see that uh, long, uninterrupted demo of uh, Rift Apart, and I have so many questions. Uh, it's amazing to see what you're doing with the power of PS5 and the SSD. Um, let me ask you first, Marcus, what are you able to do with Rift Apart that you haven't been able to do before in a Ratchet game because of the power of PS5? I mean, first and foremost, it's just pure horsepower enables us to fill our worlds with the kind of density and life that we've never been able to do before. Um, more importantly, perhaps, though, is the dimensional shifting that we have going on, which uses the SSD uh, that allows us to fling the player from planet to planet to planet uh, lightning fast, like in, in way, way faster than any we've ever been able to do before. Yeah, the, the Rift Tether, we saw that in the uh, demo. We had seen some of that in the, the trailer. So that's that's all actual gameplay. Mike, I'm curious, like, how does that how does that work as you kind of play through the game? Are there certain moments and levels where you can jump, or how, how do you play through that? Yeah, so in the game, there is dimensional damage spread throughout the galaxy that Ratchet and Clank have to find a way to fix. And you can find these weak points in space-time that you can pull to, to you with your rift tether. It's like being able to lasso a portal. And that enables you to basically like warp across the world to find new places to discover or gain a tactical advantage in combat. Wow, yeah, I gotta say, like when you see that and you imagine the, the jumping from multiple worlds uh, at, 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 you know, at instantaneously almost, and it sounds like there's no load screens throughout the entire game? That's right, we're going soon. That's right, yep. Wow. All right. You bite so confident. Both of you saying, I like it. Um, now <laughs> let me ask you about dual sense. That's something that is a big part of PS five. Uh, I've had a chance to hands on with the controller with the addictive triggers and the haptics. Um, how are you using that for, to sort of impact the gameplay of rift apart? So at the heart of every ratchet and clank game is a powerful arsenal of weapons. That just exude a ton of personality and the dual sense is sort of like, it feels like it was made for, Ratchet and Clank, just because the haptics give us a whole new layer for the weapons to express themselves. So, for example, your burst pistol, of course, it gives you like a satisfying click or kick with every bullet. But when you throw the shatter bomb, you can actually feel the energy pulsing off the grenade fade away as it gets further apart from you. Basically, the haptics are expressive enough that every weapon feels different and you can tell what you're holding. But of course, the adaptive trigger like takes that to a functional level where, in addition to the trigger pull feeling unique, we can actually use that as a super intuitive way to add alternate functions to the weapons. So, for example, in the demo, we've got the Enforcer, which is a double-barreled shotgun. You can pull the trigger part of the way down until you hit resistance to fire a single barrel. And then whenever you feel like it's the right time, pull it the rest of the way for a double shot. So you might be swarmed by a bunch of little enemies 
you only want to waste one shot on them and then wait a minute for even more to swarm in before finishing them off. But a big guy, you probably want to just give both barrels to right away. So there's a nice intuitive way of basically raising the skill ceiling and giving you more ways to play better. Wow. No, uh, I'm excited to see how you guys are going to roll that out across what I'm sure are an insane uh, you know, group of weapons, as always. Uh, Plot-wise, Marcus, tell us a bit about this game. I think some fans have wondered, you know, does this tie into the movie plot line, the game plot line? Like, how, Tell us in the ratchet verse where this sits. Yeah. Well, canonically, this is a, an extension of uh, Ratchet & Clank uh, Into the Nexus, the 2013 game. But it's a standalone adventure, so it's one that... It, even if you've never played a Ratchet & Clank game, you can get into it and you'll understand it and you'll enjoy it. Um, for hardcore fans, we have a lot of nods. You're going you're gonna to see a lot of returning characters and planets and uh, see them all through a whole new light of uh, multi- multiple dimensionality. Yeah, no, this, this Rift Tether thing I think looks really exciting. And how often, like, is that something we saw in the demo? Is that something you're going to see, like, frequently in the game? Are they special moments? Like, I guess I'm curious, like, how often you use that technique for gameplay. So the, the Rift Tether has created these anomalies all throughout the galaxy. You'll encounter those pretty often. There's even a few more types of dimensional damage you'll encounter that we haven't shown yet. Okay. Now, being pulled between worlds, that's, that's localized to chasing after Dr. Nefarious in the demo. Um, and that's sort of reserved for special moments when you really have to... Um, when, when the dimensional damage really tears wide open. Well, I got to say, it looks incredible. And then at the end, we got another tease of uh, this female Lombax. Uh, I, I know you guys have confirmed she is playable in parts of the game. Uh, I think everyone wants to know, though, do we have a name for her? Uh, I mean, the world is more interesting with mysteries, and we're going to have to keep this one uh, a little longer. <laughs> do, do we get a number of letters in her name or anything? <laughs> Too many smart people on the internet. Okay, they'll okay. figure it out right away. She's not named Abby, though, right? <laughs> All right. Well, we'll have to <laughs> wait and see what you guys have in store for us. I got to say, I mean, it looks incredible. The Ratchet games are always so much fun. And as you said, when you think of the power of SSD and the Dual Sense all coming together, uh, it looks really exciting. Before we go, though, uh, I think everyone around the world wants to know when we're going to get to play this game. Anything you can share with us on where you're at in development right now? Mike. <laughs> Mike? <laughs> so Ratchet and Clank is coming out in the PS5 launch window. So we haven't announced a release, a specific release date yet, so stay tuned for that. What kind of window? Is it big window? So, no, I'm just kidding. All right, that's all we're going to get, I'm sure. Ratchet & Clank, Rift Apart, coming in the launch window for PlayStation 5. I got to say, uh, Insomniac, uh, we're so excited about what you guys are doing across PlayStation, and uh, the game looks incredible. So thank you so much for all you've done, and we look forward to seeing more of uh, Rift Apart soon. Thanks, Jeff. Take care. All right, Marcus and Mike yeah. from Insomniac, thanks, thanks for showing us that first look at Ratchet & Clank. We're playstation 5 and that's going to do it for opening night live thank you so much for watching from around the world and make sure to stay tuned all weekend for more live gamescom coverage at gamescom.global as for us we'll see you later this year for the game awards 2020 our team is hard at work to build a very special live show for you coming in december we'll see you then good night